What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. Today I'm working on the BMW E36, Project Free 36 actually. Uh, this was a free E36 that I uh, picked up and I've been doing a bunch of modifications to and getting this thing absolutely dialed. So I got some subframe bushings installed and now what I need to do is actually reinforce the sway bar location. So to do this, I went ahead and cleaned up the metal right here. As you can see, brought that down to bare metal. I cleaned up the metal right here and I'm cleaning it up right here a little bit. Uh, that way I can install these reinforcement brackets. So this guy goes like this, as you can see, kind of notched in there. Um, I'll end up welding that up. And then this little top piece, that will kind of go right on the top right here. Um, we'll get it all lined up, tacked up, welded on and all that and get this piece reinforced. So as you can see, this factory location, this is where the rear sway bar goes. Uh, it's very weak as far as its rear play. When you put on heavy duty sway bars, uh, you have a tendency that you can bend this just like on the E30 chassis. I think the E46 chassis actually has the same issues as well. So we're gonna be reinforcing that. Now uh, I'll jump into that, burn that in and get that all done. The next topic that I got down here is getting the reinforcement plates welded in. Now these are the reinforcement plates. Uh, you can see they kind of look like this. This is for the rear subframe and this is for the rear lower control arm bushing. These are all the plates that we gotta weld in. There's six of them total, but uh, four for the subframe and then two for the R cap, which are these guys right here, these little pockets. Um, so I gotta clean this up. Now, there is something on this car still. It's called the gas tank. If you do not feel comfortable welding with a gas tank on, I recommend to remove this. My gas tank is very, very empty, so I may drop this. I'm not totally sure. I may also just stuff a, a welding blanket like all up in it. That way I have good deflection from the gas tank and I'm, you know, feel pretty, pretty good about no sparks getting on it or anything like that. I don't have any leaks on it or anything. So no excess fumes or anything like that. So I may just weld it under the chassis. I don't know. We got to start cleaning up some of the areas. So this is where the subframe connects right here. As you can see, uh, we need to clean that up so that we can get these little, these little guys going. I forget if they go this way or this way. I'm along the lines of that, but we got to clean that up and get that down to bare metal. Yeah, can prep the area and start welding it. Same with this, uh, we gotta prep all the outside areas, scrape off all the undercoating and get it going. Take a little scotch pipe pad and do some work on this. There's undercoating up here, so just, you know, start burning it off. We'll get it cleaned up, but I got that spot to do that spot to do this spot to do and this spot to do and then i'll move on to the rtap pocket so far i don't see any cracks but we may expose a crack after we grind this all down the metal is now prepped this is the particular plate that is going to go here what we'll do is we'll basically like put the bolt in leave it in place uh you can burn a couple uh rosette welds right here or kind of like tack welds right uh spot welds if you will put those in and then start burning the weld around the side. Now I'd recommend to also install or do some weld through primer on this. We don't want this to rust. I'll try to seal it up pretty good as far as like putting a bead all the way around it. Obviously I don't want this stuff lighting on fire either. So we got to keep that in mind as well. This is the next one right here. I guess I'll kind of work on, get that one going. And then uh, we got these guys right here. Now these ones are going to use these plates. This is a messy job. so. You know keep that in mind i think it's pretty obvious it's going to be a messy job but it's going to go yeah looks like something like that clean up all the areas around it clean up below it too because that's going to burn up so scariest part about welding this thing is basically not lighting your car on fire yeah that's that's kind of the trick don't light your car on fire I'm gonna hit all these little reinforcement plates with some weld through zinc primer. I'm also gonna hit all of the prepped areas up here with some weld through zinc primer as well. That way we just don't uh, rust any of this stuff out. I am in California, but you know, it's uh, good to take care of this stuff as you want it to last a long time. It's welding time. Let's go ahead and get my ground over here. 
I am using a Miller Multimatic 215 MIG welder. You could MIG, TIG, stick this off, whatever you wanted to do. Um, basically, whatever welder you have. I would prefer MIG in this situation as it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm using a fire blanket over the gas tank area. If it seems a little sketch, I don't know, I'm gonna try it out at first. If it seems weird or it seems like any sparks are getting in there, I'll uh, remove the gas tank. But yeah, that's the uh, procedure I'm doing for this. We got the welder right here. Something that I picked up on Amazon, that's super cool. I'll leave a link down below for this. Nice item, this extension cord, pretty inexpensive on Amazon. And if you guys don't have a good cord, um, I highly recommend this one because, well, it lets you get your welder to places you don't, couldn't normally get because you got a nice amount of extension cords. So this thing is pretty dang sweet. Let's go ahead and plug it in. It's one of those ones that kind of glows so you know when it's on, which is cool. But yeah, good amount of length. We can plug this in. Turn on our gas. Now um, I have 035 wire on. Um, a lot of time you see people on YouTube welding without gloves. That is really, really stupid for like three reasons. One main reason is obviously uh, burning yourself. Yeah, wear MIG welding or stick welding gloves when you're welding because you can burn the hell out of yourself. Another reason is you really can't get into the work as good as you could um, if you're just using bare hands because it's, it's stupid and you have all the heat there and then you're kind of scared of it and you're burning yourself and that's dumb. Uh, third reason is UV burn. So uh, you also want to put on a long sleeve shirt at a minimum, uh, FR rated shirt, or else you can get UV uh, sunburn, right? And it's the bad one that can give you skin cancer. So that is not good. Um, so I'll put on my leathers. Where are those? Got these nice, this nice little Miller leathers and get all strapped up, get my welding helmet on, tuck my beard and be ready to go. So uh, start this out, see how it goes. We'll weld the, uh, the little guys first, just the spot welds. Pretty good. I mean, a little bit of porosity up here, whatever. Um, I'm happy with it. Not really a lot of burn through. Um, I could have get these welds better. I really just needed to dial in my MIG a bit better. Uh, the wire wasn't running 100%, but uh, at least to the way I would like it. I guess I could have messed around with it more, but whatever. I just kind of wanted to get these burns in. Now uh, it is time to just finish up any little welds there and then do the uh, the R tabs over here. I had and welded this plate in right here. This one turned out decent. Uh, got a little bit of some air, some porosity from the backside, I think, right there. This one, not as pretty. I don't know what was going on. It seemed like the shielding gas was getting blown away or something. It's a little windy out. This one looks pretty good. Pretty good on that one. And then this one is, uh, decent as well i haven't welded in a while welding overhead in weird spots is weird a little bit of porosity here um i don't know i think my like i said the shielding gas i think was getting blown away because like this is fine here and whatever doesn't matter it'll work um you know it'd be easier if i was standing up and that sort of thing confined spaces are not the easiest but uh, i'm probably the most happy with with this one here it's not bad not too shabby. So I have these rear subframe sway bar reinforcements. These are from Gurgistic. Uh, this is one of the sides. So one side looks like that. One's a mirror to the other side. Uh, this is the sway bar area. As you can see, I cleaned up the metal there, clean up the metal there, clean this up here, here, here. Those are kind of the areas that I'm gonna weld. This is going to go like this to reinforce sway bar piece and it's going to go to here now this little piece here is kind of the cap so this cap basically goes like this right so we're going to get it on here uh first we'll tack it kind of get it into place and then we will go ahead and burn it in 
Very important when you guys are welding. I know I see a lot of people on YouTube not doing this correctly. Safety glasses, welding hood. Why? Why safety glasses? Well, you put up your welding hood, you got hot slag, it pops, goes right into your eyeball, and you go blind. I know it sounds ridiculous, but like, it happens. It happens to quite a few people. So, safety glasses, good idea. Uh, welding coat, welding jacket, FR rated jacket, leathers, something along those lines, and long sleeves. Why? UV burn and also actual burn, right? So, believe it or not, if you're welding in a t-shirt, you can get a sunburn right through your t-shirt uh and it's not a good one so um i've actually done it before not fun other thing you want gloves i see a lot of people welding without gloves very very stupid idea when you see people do that i just say you don't know what you're doing three things going on there one you can weld much better with gloves on. Why? Because you're not afraid to get into the metal. Uh, you're not afraid to burn yourself. Number two, you burn yourself if you don't wear gloves. And number three, uh, sunburn again. So yeah, make sure to wear all the proper PPE. Even a uh, little welding cap. I don't know where mine is, but sometimes that's nice because you can burn the hell out of the top of your head. And long pants as well. Um, also, you know, closed shoes because you're going to burn the hell out of yourself. Even with all these things, you'll still burn yourself, but it'll feel good while you're doing it. So let's get uh, on to actually burning this on. What I like to do is just get as comfortable as possible welding this thing. So put it into a position that you like. realized my welding hood was not working when I did a lot of the other stuff and I didn't realize because I was under the car but wow that made a hell of a difference being able to uh, see correctly you know just one of those things <laughs> I don't need to do this but why not You guys can see the weld there, you can see the weld there. Let me uh, clean that up with a brush. Right. Okay, so that, yeah, that looks really good in there. That looks good. Um, gotta hit this top piece. This is just gonna tie everything together. If this was your finger and you don't have gloves on, see how fast my finger with a leather glove on turns to smoke? Yeah, that'd be your flesh if you don't have a glove on. But anyways, uh, that looks pretty good there. I'm happy with that. Uh, a little bit around the front, I'll probably grind that down. This is uh, how it looks here. Looks pretty good. All welded in. And that's how you do the rear subframe sway bar reinforcement. So I'll grind this down and paint it up and we'll be good to go. Yeah, that looks all good. Sweet, I'm happy with that. Doing the R tabs, the rear lower control arm reinforcements, these uh, right here, these little pockets, these have an issue with mostly with rusting out and, and getting old and stuff like that. And what you have to do is weld in a reinforcement plate. So we are gonna go ahead and do that. Now I'm gonna show you how this thing works. Oh my God. So we're gonna grind out this whole area down here and um, 
clean it up that way i can weld these r tabs in so i gotta clean up the metal down here and get to basically grinding so i'll start with that and then we'll start welding this in and cleaned up all the metal on those so these weld in just like this right this is the r tab pocket it's kind of all just yep just like that Do like a rosette weld around that fill in that kind of plug weld around that maybe you know put a little bit of weld in this area too might just stitch it up i don't know how like solid um i'm gonna go because it's not super necessary however one thing is this is a gas tank right here if you want you can remove your gas tank i am just using a kevlar welding blanket i'm gonna stuff that up in there to where no sparks and no fire and no flames can melt the gas tank because that uh that's bad news that's fires and things like that and we don't want to do that so uh yep um already did these plates here they came out okay honestly i didn't have my welding hood on like on it wasn't turned on which <laughs> wasn't great that was kind of funny i didn't notice till the end until i'm like welding on on the uh subframe right here and I was like, dude, this thing's not even on. I was wondering why I was so blind. I thought it was just dark under here. So hopefully these turn out a little bit better. We'll kind of see how it goes, but I'll put on all my PPE. So hood, safety glasses, welding jacket, long pants, gloves, all that stuff. So there it is, welded in. Not the prettiest thing ever. Uh, it's it's in there, so I just went around these, went around these. It was burning through a little bit, so I had to like patch it up a little bit, got a little bit of a weld there. Um, yeah, so gonna go ahead and grind this all flush, make sure it's all you know super flush to where um, when I bolt the R tab back in, it's all good to go and we'll paint it up and don't do it on a windy day like me because a lot of my shielding gas kept blowing out and i was getting some porosity I grind this down and make it all smooth like i was saying they got there's a little bit of porosity in there because the shielding gas blew out but um it's whatever i gotta get up in here with my smaller little die grinder It's way too windy of a day and I know that so it got quite a bit of porosity in here. I hate welding overhead it's literally the most unfun thing to do but uh you know it's on there we'll grind it down make it look a little better that's not horrible it's also not good uh yeah for whatever reason the shilling gas so it just seems to be blowing away quite a bit so um like I said it's pretty uh there's pretty good wind gusts and things like that pretty much every time I start welding stuff you can see all the trees blowing and all that so that's not ideal to do outside see that nice wind gust you can hear it so anyways uh, I'll go ahead and do a little bit of grinding and make this look a bit better and then do the other side 